Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. It's the show that just learned about TikTok cults, like the step chickens. In a world of many TikTok cults, only one can stand at the top. And that is us, the step chickens. Rise up. Rise up, step chickens! Rise up, step chickens. So, two things. One, I think my co-writer may have met his dream girl in Melissa, and two, this might be the most elaborate industry plan I've ever seen, and we're gonna get videos next from the step chickens to vote for Mm. Now for some hot takes. It's starting to cool down a little bit here in LA, and by that, I mean below 70 degrees. You, you know what that means. It's tech flea season. Now, before you people on the East Coast start to get all judgmental about our inability to handle a little breeze of cool air, know this, we don't give a f I've been waiting since May, when it was in the 60s, by the way, to rock my tech fleece hoodie and pants combo, and you can't tell me nothing. So Billie Eilish got the Nike Air Max uptempo barley green trending this weekend when she posted the sneakers during an Instagram Q&A, claiming she had a what color is the dress moment with her dad. So in official photos, and to anybody who sees them in person, the uptempos are light green and white but on IG Live, which isn't really known for its image quality, it does look pink and white in some angles. As you might expect, this started a slight kerfuffle and Billy was not having it with some of her fans. But if you're like me, you probably checked if the shoe has gone up in resale value since the incident, and I'm here to inform you that it really hasn't. But it was selling for above retail even before Billy's Q&A, which is quite the surprise. Uh, Beyonce's latest Adidas Ivy Park drop, I mean drip, is set for October 29th that it includes a wide variety of kicks and apparel, including one that I like to call the Carl because it's always some guy named Carl that's in a brown shirt and shorts that drops off the sneakers that I unbox. Just once, I would like the name tag to read Beyonce or Queen, but no, it's Carl. Always Carl. Look, no offense if you're watching this, Carl. I'll see you on Monday, right? Right? Washington Wizards guard and a guy who once made Colin Cowherd cry tears of white privilege because he did the Dougie once, John Wall was on ESPN the other day to talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Well, he was supposed to talk about the Cowboys, but it turns out he was multitasking for all the world to see because he was playing cards at the time. So they don't really got a legit team like I do. Look, if I had to go on national TV to talk about my San Francisco 49ers, I wouldn't be looking to play cards because we're actually a decent team who just made the Super Bowl last season. But if I was John Wall, Dallas Cowboys fan, I would definitely be playing spades. And shout out to Taylor Rooks of Bleacher Report for finding out the most important question of all, did John Wall win at spades? Yes, actually, yes, he did. Uh, and speaking of John Wall, ESPN's Nick DiPaola tweeted that Mitchell and Ness just released a Wall throwback Wizards jersey. That's notable because 2010 is now considered throwback and I don't know how to feel about that. Like, if we're doing John Wall throwbacks now, can we get a Cousteau throwback too where I have like thicker hair and I wore whatever style it was I was wearing in 2010, no, no need to research that. And like my green screen, it was basically taped together construction paper because Michaels was closed for the night and Kicks on Fire needed weekly sneaker reviews like two hours ago and sorry just having a weird weird thoughts for a second there i'm a young healthy and vibrant zoomer what do you mean john wall was a reebok guy huh shout out to john boyega for posting what i consider to be a dream zoom meeting setup with the interchangeable background the minimalist chair and table the light ring the fancy chess set and what appears to be the juby renegan which is a naruto reference that i don't totally understand as if his nerd cred wasn't already over 9,000. like what shows can i watch to up my anime bona fides we've already talked about dragon ball and neon genesis evangelion on this show let me know in the comments below so it's the NBA offseason, and what's the resident sneaker king of the league to do other than show off his sneaker collection? And that's exactly what PJ Tucker did. Nike Yeezys, Drake Jordans, what the LeBrons, it was basically like a hype beast fever dream, but for PJ, it's just another Wednesday. Until DeMar DeRozan entered the chat. Now, we don't normally see DeMar talk big game about his sneakers. He just shows them on the court. And when it comes to player exclusives, few are on the condom natives level. His Kobe PE game is likely second to none, and because he's a higher tier Nike athlete, I wouldn't be surprised if he had a secret stash of amazing kicks that few people actually have. But still, I was a little surprised to see him at PJ to call him out and to stake his claim as NBA Sneaker King, and then to leave a respectfully line at the end? These are either sneaker fighting words or DeMar and PJ are just really bored right now. 
But I'm curious though, if these two were to get into a sneaker battle, who would you root for? The guy who has the extensive PE game that nobody can match and may or may not have a treasure trove that is full of surprises, or the proven commodity who has earned the King moniker for a few years now and likely still has some heat hidden for moments like this. I'm torn to be honest, because on one side, I would love to have what DeMar has, one of one sneakers made specifically for him and access to just about anything Nike has on the docket. But on the other hand, PJ has one of one PEs of other players, a sprawling collection of heat that isn't limited to just the past few years and the benefit of the doubt from the community. This is all to say that I would love to see these two go head to head because we could use the content during this off season of uncertainty. Because let's be honest, who knows when we'll get to see these guys on the court again. Sound off in the comments and let me know who you would pick in the battle between DeMar and PJ. All right. Uh, and now we have a prepared statement from my co-writer about the Supreme and Nike Air Max Plus. You know, the one that spells out Supreme on the side. I am this show. Co-writer. That, that's all I get? Co-writer? Without me, this show wouldn't be here. I know it spells out Supremes on the side. Yes. How could I not know? Every 15-year-old hype beast on sneaker Twitter keeps pointing it out like it's not blatantly obvious. Oh, it's not blatantly obvious to you. I guess that's just how you were raised. I stay in this game. I know every trick in the trash Supreme playbook. Watch. I'm going to call it right now. Their next collab is going to be a PG4 and it's just going to say world famous on the shroud and we're all going to have a good laugh about it. And in this fantasy, Beyonce comes to my doorsteps to deliver my eye league park drip have fun hanging out with carl jacques i really am the show i am the show um like he knows i signed his paycheck right right all right let's move on to the heat check Welcome to the Heat Check. Let's take a look at the week's top releases. First, we have the Fragment Air Jordan 35 in base gray. This is on October 28th for $195. So where's the gray part in these? I'm kidding, of course, but this feels like an extension of Fragment's Air Jordan 1 collab that was a combination of black, white, and royal blue. I doubt this will have the same impact the ones did, but who am I to doubt Fragment's hold on the culture? Then we have the Off-White Air Jordan 5 in sale. These drop on the 29th for $225. Like all things Off-White, I respect what Virgil does and the creative freedoms he appears to have with his collabs. I just don't think it's a pair that I can see myself wearing on a regular basis, sometimes though. Also, somebody on Twitter said these things look like shrimp tempura, and now I can't unsee that. Ivy Park Adidas Ultra Boost, those drop on the 30th for $200. It's a highlighter green Ultra Boost and it's co-signed by the Queen, what's not to love? And that's how you masterfully avoid the wrath of the Bayhive. Then we have the Slam Jam Nike Dunk. These are on the 30th for 120. It's all about the subtle details for this one. It looks like a black and white pair of dunks from afar, but then you see the details like the upside down logo on the tongue, the crisscrossing laces, the translucent outsole, and unique perforations that makes me wonder if my feet can actually breathe in these things. And then we have the Adidas Yeezy Boost 380 Calcite Glow. These drop on the 31st for 230. And now a new segment where we just Google Yeezy nicknames because I don't have the energy to talk about them in any real way. <clears throat> Calcite is a rock forming mineral. It is extremely common and found throughout the world in sedimentary, metamorphic, and ingenious rock. Some geologists consider it to be a ubiquitous material, one that is found everywhere. Calcite is the principal constitute of limestone and marble. And now you know. Then we have the Air Jordan 1 Black Mocha. These drop on the 31st for 170. It's the kind of sort of Cactus Jack ones. All you need is somebody who makes these custom backwards swooshes and you're basically set. Not entirely sure what they are set for. A trip to McDonald's to buy the Travis Scott meal that I don't even know is available anymore. Hmm. Uh, then we have the Jolly Rancher New Balance Kawhi. These drop on the 31st for 160. Inspired by former finals MVP's favorite Jolly Rancher flavor. This collab is out of left field for everybody involved from New Balance to Kawhi to Jolly Rancher, but I have a soft spot for it because I like Jolly Ranchers too. Even if Kawhi is on the JV team, he can still come to the Lakers. He has like one more year of his contract. It's fine. And then for my pick of the week, we're going with the Nike Dia de los Muertos collection. These drop on the 27th. As much as I love the colorful sneakers in this collection, especially the Air Max 90, I hope that Nike really took the time to pay homage to this special time in Mexican culture by working with actual Mexican people and not just copying and pasting something they saw in Coco. Uh, now for a heat check on McDonald's. It's a little weird, yes, but I have to say that I'm torn by the strategy of the fast food chain. On one hand, it's a good business for them to team up with Travis Scott to launch a collab featuring an affordable value meal and merch that kids will eat up like they were McNuggets. On the other hand, I'm a little shocked that they went to the well again with Jay Balvin. 
Nothing against the artist who is super popular right now and has an Air Jordan 1 collab that is out of this world, but it's a little jarring for me that the timeline of celebrity McDonald's meals went from Michael Jordan to Travis Scott to J Balvin. I mean, what's next? Beyonce, Megan Rapino, Serena Williams, Cardi B, Michelle Obama? Notice those are all women? Like, if it's great for their bottom line, then I wouldn't be surprised to see another collab soon, but I hope that it's highlighting the vast number of people who eat at McDonald's at 2 a.m. because everything else is closed. I'm gonna give McDonald's collab four McRib sandwiches out of 10 french fries dipped in their ice cream. What? I, I, can't, I can't be the only person who did that when they were a kid, right? You guys dip your french fries in your ice cream as well, don't you? Come on. And now for this week's hard pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go, like Paul George's signature shoe line. Well, buckle up everybody, it's more. So it's the NBA off season. So it's time to take stock of the year, or should I say the years that were in sneakers. Even though it's been a minute now since the league decided to say it to players having kicks that match their team colors, I feel like it was this season when things really escalated. You've got players wearing mismatching kicks, P.J. Tucker creating headlines with every obscure pair he could find, and LeBron, well, LeBron does what LeBron does because he's LeBron and he got us our 17th championship, baby! And that is our contractually obligated mention of my team's title for this episode. Anyways, this past season we welcomed Embiid and Donovan Mitchell to the elite ranks of signature shoe athletes. And because everything ran so long, Mitchell managed to debut both the Adidas Don issue one and issue two in the same season. Damian Lillard was lighting up the bubble in the Adidas Dame six and scored a career high 61 points in the process. Jordan Brand stealthily introduced Chris Paul's latest signature shoe while having Jason Tatum, Zion Williamson, and Luka Doncic rock the Air Jordan 34 and Air Jordan 35. Giannis double dipped like Mitchell with the Zoom Freak 1 and 2. We saw the Kyrie 6 on the feet of John Morant. King James debuted the Nike LeBron 18 in the finals, and Anthony Davis, Andre Iguodala, Devin Booker, and many more kept the legend of the Black Mama going with the Nike Kobe 5 Pro Tro. And then there was the Nike PG4, the signature shoe of Paul George, AKA Playoff P, AKA Layoff P, AKA Pandemic P, AKA How You Gonna Hit the Side of the Backboard P in the Game 7 P. I would talk about the Nike KD12, but when I searched for it, the first name that came up was Dante DiVincenzo, AKA White Dante. Shout out to Bamani Jones for that one. We'll just wait until KD is back and rocking the 13s next season. So let's get back to the PG4. Be honest, when was the last time you were checking for the PG4? Before the pandemic P-jokes? Before the pandemic? Maybe you wanted to pick up the all-star colorway that he didn't get to wear because he wasn't an all-star. Or was the last time you heard about the PG4 was when Nike first introduced the shoe all the way back in January of this year, which might as well have been January 2019 or really January 2018 at this point. Wait, does it go further than that? Was it the PG3 NASA collabs? The 2.5 PlayStations? The two PlayStation that had the code on the heel that my co-writer may or may not have used when Paul showed them off for the first time? It's been a long time since the PGs were part of the sneaker zeitgeist and it's got us to thinking, would the culture really miss the Nike PG line if it went away? Now, before you go thinking we want to sneaker cancel Paul George, that's not what we're here for. Consider this a concern troll. PG is a phenomenal basketball player who came back from a catastrophic freak accident during a Team USA exhibition game at peak form. He was third in the MVP voting in 2019. We thought he was going to be a Laker when he became a free agent and we'd have been over the moon ecstatic if that had happened, but then he decided to go in a different direction and force his way to LA to team up with Kawhi Leonard on the JV squad. And like I said earlier, he wasn't an all-star. He had a middling season by his standards and he was recovering from an injury. He had a bad bubble playoff, but you could say that for everybody except, you know, LeBron James and Anthony Davis and Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero and Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and, well, you get the idea. Priced slightly above $100, the PG line is no doubt popular among the younger set of NBA fans and the parents who have to buy them. He's occupying the same space that KD and Kyrie did with their earlier signature kicks. It behooves Nike to have somebody who is the budget signature athlete, especially since Giannis and his Zoom Freak line could be making the jump soon to a higher price point as he continues to rack up on the individual accolades. Think about the Nike signature shoe hierarchy as it stands right now. At the top, we've got LeBron, four-time champ. Next, we've got KD, two-time champ. Then it's Kyrie, a champion who made the go-ahead shot in a game seven to win without hitting the side of the backboard. And at the bottom, we've got Giannis and PG. 
Giannis is the reigning two-time MVP, reigning defensive player of the year, and somebody who would look so cool in purple and gold, but that's not what we're talking about. Paul George got pandemic pee jokes. Again, not to throw shade, but are we sure Nike wouldn't be better off with a new signature athlete that is priced for the budget conscious sneakerhead? So we decided to do what everyone does and we asked Twitter. Well, we didn't so much ask as we put together a meme with a one gotta go gimmick. So let's read some of those replies. PG for the fact that all the best colorways aren't available in GS, which is whack. Really only a few series are nice. Giannis is only on his second shoe, so kind of premature. Kyrie is king for GS and inclusion on almost every special edition. KD used to be amazing as well for GS inclusion. Giannis got to go, just not filling them as much as the other three have had at least one classic to hoop in. PG's got to go, LOL. KD is a signature star, plain and simple. Giannis has the awards, Kyrie has a ring and the unique collabs, and other players actually wear his <laughs> as well, much like they do Kobe joints. PG, even before the playoff P stuff, nice shoes, but there was a uniqueness to Freak and Kyrie. PG's, would have said Giannis, but I'd like to see them get a couple more shots at it and to deliver something compelling. Even the ones who gave a hard pass to Giannis qualify their choice by saying that while his signature shoe line doesn't do anything for them at the moment, it could over time. By the way, I'm curious about the people who said KD has to go because it was usually accompanied by a KD comment. Like, why? What did he ever do to y'all? Are we still bothered by 2016 when he signed with Golden State? Are we still discrediting those championships? Come on, people, get over it. He's in Brooklyn now and he's enjoying life replying to your tweets that y'all thought he wasn't going to see. Stop letting him live in your head rent free, people. Anyways, back to PG. Nike signature shoe lines didn't always seem like they continued indefinitely. It just feels like it because, well, LeBron has 18. KD has 13 and Kobe got to 11 and then started over with the AD. But the Nike penny line, as iconic as it was, had to wait over a decade for the penny five because there was money to be made with the phone posits. Scottie Pippen, Charles Barkley, and Jason Kidd had small runs and guys like Alonzo Mourning had seemingly random one-offs that I'm not sure actually count. It's a different era now. I mean, we're on the Adidas D-Rolls 11, so I don't expect Nike to discontinue the PG line after one glaringly awful playoff run. Although, if that's the metric, the last time Paul had playoff success, well, LeBron was in Miami. That's a long time. And just to show you how long ago 2014 was, here are five things you could do in 2014 that you can't do right now. One, give KD his flowers for being the good guy who never left. Two, consider voting Kanye for president. <sighs> Moving on. Number three, buy most SB dunks at retail. Number four, wear a John Wall jersey with zero irony. Number five, wonder if Nike is ever going to solve the bot problem with the app. That was a bad example. For all we know, Paul George is every bit the star among the younger generation, the way you always hear about Kyrie being for the Zoomers and the free thinkers. It's entirely possible that Paul George could be a step chicken hiding in plain sight and he's big on TikTok. Holy sh what if he was the industry plant all along? Yeah, I may have been spending way too much time on the Vice YouTube channel. Maybe Nike can phase out the PG line and just let him have signature shoes that drop unlimited numbers like Paul Pierce's Air Legacy line for kids or the still going against all odds Jordan CP3. I would love to see the swoosh take a shot at young stars like Ja Morant or bring back Luka Doncic or Jason Tatum and invest in them in a big way. Not only would signature kicks from those kids excite the young hoopers, but the casual sneaker heads as well. But then again, Nike is way smarter at this than we are and the business reasons for investing and continuing to produce PG kicks still make sense to them. I'm just not sure it makes sense to the sneaker culture anymore. So do you think Paul George can bounce back and change his sneaker narrative or is there just way too much baggage now? Let us know down in the comments below. And that's gonna do it for the show. Thank you guys for watching Hard Pass. I am Jacques Slade and I'll see you next week, but not before I show you the purity of kids who never stop believing. Oh, that's magic. That's magic, it got me. It gotta be magic. <laughs> yes, kids. That was magic. I'll see you next week. Peace.